This videotape is designed to help you solve physics problems. It consists of, first of all, a review of acceleration, followed by three example problems on acceleration, a review of free fall, followed by four example problems of free fall. Each of the problems is computer animated, and each of the problems is completely solved. Before viewing this videotape, read your textbook. Pay attention to the concepts of displacement, velocity, acceleration, and in particular, the equations for constant acceleration. Use your VCR controls to stop the tape anytime you want, to play the tape backwards and review previous sections. In general, use your VCR controls to control the pace at which you move through this videotape. We begin now with a brief review of motion and acceleration. Our first problem involves a jet plane landing on the deck of an aircraft carrier. It reads, a jet touches down on the deck of a carrier with a speed of 65 meters per second. If the jet is completely stopped in a distance of 110 meters, A, what was its acceleration? And B, how long did it take to stop? Let's first take a look at that jet landing on the carrier. Jet lands from the left of the screen, touches down, gradually comes to rest. The information given in the problem is that the jet touches down with a velocity of 65 meters per second, travels 110 meters before it stops. Question is, what is the acceleration? And another question is, how long does it take to stop? Let's give that problem a try. Before I solve the problem, why don't you make an attempt to solve that problem and check your solution with mine? Let me outline some steps that will help you to form a systematic approach to problem solving. First, carefully read the problem and watch the animation for the problem. Secondly, translate the English of the problem into mathematical symbols that the equations will understand. Thirdly, sketch a figure of the problem. The visual clues will help you solve the problem, and physics is a very visual subject. Next. Search the equations relevant to the physics of the problem and plan a solution. Solve the problem. And finally, check the solution to the problem. Is the solution reasonable? Do the units check? I'd like to elaborate a bit on the second step here, that of translate for a moment. Here's problem one again. We can translate the information in this problem into symbols. A jet touches down on the deck of a carrier with a speed of 65 meters per second. The 65 meters per second, we translate to read V0, the initial velocity, is 65 meters per second. If the jet is completely stopped, we translate to mean when the velocity of the jet is zero in a distance of 110 meters, that the distance traveled or its displacement from the point where it touched down is 110 meters. What was its acceleration? That's pretty obvious. What's A? How long did it take to stop? That's also pretty obvious. That's the quantity T that we want. You should try to do this on each problem Students sometimes have trouble with something like this. If the jet is completely stopped, it does not say in the problem that the final velocity is equal to zero. That's an assumption that you have to make. All right, let's take a crack at solving the problem now. Here's our plane landing uh, with an initial velocity of 65 meters per second. Let's claim that at the 
time it lands, the time then is equal to zero, and also that the origin of our coordinate system also coincides with that point so that x0 is equal to 0. The question in the problem is what is the acceleration and how long does it take to stop? Let's examine the equations that we had previously written down looking for the acceleration and the time. The first equation that we have here contains both the acceleration and the time, so we can't use it to find either one of them. The second equation contains the final velocity, which we know, the initial velocity, which we know, the final displacement, which we know, and the initial displacement, which we know. The only thing that we don't know is the acceleration. So this can be used in order to find the acceleration. Let's go back and rewrite that equation. We'll write that v squared minus v0 squared is equal to 2 times the acceleration times the final displacement minus the initial displacement. Plugging in our values, the final velocity is 0 minus the initial velocity, 65 meters per second. That quantity is squared is equal to 2 times the acceleration times the final displacement, 110 meters minus the initial displacement, which is 0. Solving then for the acceleration, we find that the acceleration is minus 65 meters per second divided squared divided by 2 times 110 meters. If you use your calculator to work this out, see if you get minus 19.2 meters per second per second. The negative sign indicates that the acceleration is opposite in the direction to which we have chosen to be positive, which is to the right. The units are meters per second per second, which are proper units for acceleration. When we square the meters per second here, we got meters squared per second squared. We divide it by meters, so it left us with meters per second per second. I'm going to round my answers to three significant figures. I'm going to assume that all the data are accurate to three significant figures. You may differ in this last figure from mine. Maybe you'll get a 1 or a 3 there. That's not important. It simply indicates a rounding error is made by your calculator or my calculator. The next thing that we want to find is the time and the if we go down and look at our equations again and search them, the first equation has the acceleration and the time. We do now know the acceleration, so we can use this equation in order to find the time. So let us do that. If I rewrite that equation for the time, I write that the time is equal to final minus initial velocity divided by the acceleration. This is equal to the final velocity 0 minus the initial 65 meters per second. We divide this by the acceleration minus 19.2 meters per second per second giving us an answer here. If you calculate that, 3.38 seconds. The negative sign on top and bottom cancel out, so our answer is positive. We get 3.38 seconds for the time. If we check our answers, this time seems like a reasonable amount of time to stop on a carrier. It's, if it was 3.38 hours, we may have a different idea. The acceleration minus 19.2 meters per second per second, how do you check an acceleration? Well, the acceleration of gravity 
is 9.8 meters per second per second. This is roughly twice the acceleration of gravity. Sounds like a reasonable value. So let's claim then that we have solved our problem. There is the acceleration. There is the time. And we move on then to our next problem.